Justin Jackson first brought Richard Glossop's case to me, he told me he believed there was an innocent man on death row. After learning about Richard's case, I had this undeniable urge to get involved. Hey, Representative McDougal, good, good to see you again, my man. I thought if even 10% of this is true, then we possibly got an innocent guy on death row. I cannot continue to go on as a legislator and not fight for this guy because I 100% believe that he's innocent. For me, when I saw the, the documentary, um, I saw so many red flags. I sent a text to the governor this morning and basically said, listen, there is another opportunity for us to, to go to a third party to let them investigate. Ask me how many witnesses and experts were called to testify in Richard's defense. Zero. Zero. Yep. Not a single witness. And they never showed the interrogation tapes, right? No. No. To me, that's the most compelling yeah. piece of evidence. They're spoon feeding this 19 year old meth addict into saying what they, they want him to say. I have visited Richard, and he's quite remarkable and so positive. His faith has been unwavering. I'm going to keep fighting to the very end. I was taking care of my mother, who was very ill with cancer. Rich would write me letters, and he sent her a painting of a hummingbird. He wanted me to convey to her that this represents freedom outside these four walls for me, but he wanted it to represent freedom away from her pain. You guys give us hope. That's what we are this. waiting for. Yeah. We're called to love each other, right? Everyone has value, and that includes the people on death row, mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility to fight for all people. You came across this case, and you took it to uh, Representative McDougal, correct? That's right. Uh, Tell me about the conversation you all had. You, you are both proponents of the death penalty. What jumped out at you about this case that made you take it to the representative? When I first saw the documentary, Killing Richard Glossop, back in 17, when it first aired, uh, I saw so many red flags. And one in particular was when Detective Bemo said himself, I don't think this was a murder for hire, it was a botched burglary. I almost fell out of my chair. And Representative, when you looked into it, what was it that moved you to believe that this would be a miscarriage of justice to execute this man? When I watched the series, I thought, you know, if only 10% of this is true, this guy could be innocent. And so I wanted to dig in a lot deeper, and I, I got a hold of Don and, and started looking at some of the evidence that they had. Some of the things that jumped out to me is all of the money in that hotel went through Richard's hands, every bit of it. If he really wanted the money that bad, he could have taken the money, gotten in his car, and drove off without having to kill anybody. Right. And so they want us to believe that this guy actually had a friend murder him to take half the money. The reason Richard Glossop is implicated in this is because the man who bludgeoned Van Treese to death with a baseball bat and admits doing so. That's right made a deal, they said, if you will give us, if you will give us Richard Glossop, we will agree not to execute you. That's right. Now, in this part of our phone conversation, Richard explains how it felt to be on death watch three separate times. Since you have been in prison, you have been called up onto death watch three times, correct? I've been brought to the brink of execution on three occasions, yes, sir. It's a scary feeling to know you're going to die for something that you had nothing to do with. And I was in a room where it's brightly lit, and the lights are on 24-7. You're on camera, you have a guard outside your door. So you have no personal property other than a Bible. And it gets to a point where, especially when you get to that last day, you pray harder than you ever have. In the countdown, how close have you gotten each time? Have you gotten down to your last meal, for example? I had three last meals. What did you have? I had pizza, a baconator, a strawberry shake, and some fish and chips. So at that point, you believed you were eating the last thing you would ever eat, that you were going to die after that? Yes. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.